Hello, this is Steve Wood and welcome to Luke 21. I hope you're interested in studying some biblical prophecy because that's what we're doing right here. Before you listen to anyone on biblical prophecy, I think it's very wise to know exactly what we're about and what anybody else is about who's proclaiming biblical prophecy. So what I'm trying to do in this episode is share with you what you need to know about Luke 21. And I think I can put it in a sentence. We will be doing serious study of biblical prophecy that the average person can understand. Now, there are those who do superficial studies of biblical prophecy that everybody understands, and there are those who do very serious Bible study that no one understands. What I'm gonna be trying to do, and I may fail along the way, but it's my goal to do serious Bible study that you can understand. And the person to thank for that is not me, it was my grandfather. When I started studying theology, I paid him a short visit and pulled me aside and just made a very gentle suggestion about making the truths of Christianity understandable to the average person. And that's what I'm going to be trying to do. We're going to be studying books of Scripture. We're going to be looking carefully at Scripture. We'll be going through things like the epistles of First and Second Thessalonians. We'll be looking at the prophetic sections of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We'll be looking at the Old Testament prophet Daniel, and we'll be looking at Genesis. And believe me, Genesis has probably 10,000 times more to say about biblical prophecy than you would ever imagine. And a lot of people might be tempted to skip Genesis and go right to Revelation, which we will be covering. But Genesis has a lot to say. And then we'll be looking at the epistles of First and Second Peter and Jude and other scriptures like Ezekiel. We'll be dealing with topics, and don't worry, I'll be explaining all this later on as we go through, but the millennium, what's that? The rapture, the second coming, the great apostasy, the antichrist, we'll be covering all of that. Uh, you deserve to know my background real quick. I was a Jesus freak at Calvary Chapel, was thoroughly introduced to the idea of the rapture at any moment, and did a lot of really great Bible study along with that prophetic teaching. While I was at Calvary, I attended Assembly of God uh, College, graduated from there, did a lot of youth ministry, campus ministry, evangelistic ministries, then went off to Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary following that. I became an evangelical pastor with the Presbyterian Church in America, the PCA, and now I'm a Catholic. So it's been a long journey. And the most important thing you need to know about me, and I do think it's the most important thing about me, is my view of the Bible. And I'm just gonna give you a, a hop, skip, and a jump of how the Bible has impacted my life. When I was serving in the United States Navy, one of these little red penny Bibles, which are now I think 20 or 25 cents, but in any case, I was um, one night coming back to the ship and I noticed on the deck of my ship, somebody had either thrown away or dropped by mistake this little penny Bible. And even though it's just a handful of pages, it really sparked me because at the time, I was studying New Age religion. I was trying to free my karma and all that type of thing. And uh, this had an incredible effect on me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any idea what to do. So I wrote them, sent them $5, and they sent me back like 100 of these or so. And I started passing them out in the chow line and the chaplain called me in like, well, what do you think you're doing here? I just told him that th just this much of the Bible began changing my life. And then my second step was I was studying to free my karma at a new age center in Virginia Beach. I was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia in, in the Navy. And I bought a Bible there and it, 
fortunately it was a regular Bible because they had new age Bibles and regular Bibles and such. But I wanted to free my karma and uh, I started reading the Bible. And the point was I was born into a Christian family. I needed to understand the religion I was born into so I could move on to higher states of consciousness and enlightenment. Well, I did get enlightened. By the time I started Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those started sounding awful lot alike, but I didn't quite know why. And then I got to John and everything seemed to change. And I got to John chapter eight and verse 12, where Jesus said, I am the light of the world and he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And I was really hoping for enlightenment as a thing, as an experience, not as a person, and particularly a person who claimed to be God himself that you could connect with. Well, uh, my life did change. And I see very directly, uh, I mean, I was just like a crazy university student and then dropping out of college, joining the Navy, studying New Age movement, I was lost and it, I was found by God's grace because of the scriptures. So I have a very, very strong attachment to the scriptures. I attended what has been called one of the finer evangelical seminaries in the world, Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary in Massachusetts. And yet even in an evangelical seminary in the early uh, 80s, uh, there was a big debate going on in the country, even amongst evangelicals, about the level of inspiration in the Bible. Yeah, the Bible's inspired, but, you know, are there some errors in it here and there, or some things we shouldn't take as seriously as maybe they should? And so there is a question put out, kind of like, does this whole debate really matter? Let's just get on with things. And there was an organization by the name of the International Council on Biblical Inerrancy. So as a student at an evangelical seminary, wanting to strengthen the evangelical seminary student's view of scripture, I wrote the International Council on Biblical Inerrancy, and they had this booklet, Does Inerrancy Matter? And I told them that I was a student wanting to strengthen my evangelical seminary students' views on scriptures, and they sent me a whole box of these, and I gave them out to my seminary classmates. I want to read you a few of the things it says in here. For instance, it, has, it starts out with a letter from St. Augustine to St. Jerome, St. Jerome, the great Bible translator. St. Augustine says, quote, I have learned to hold the scriptures alone inerrant. I firmly affirm that to this day. St. Augustine further went on, I have learned to pay them such honor and respect as to believe most firmly that not one of their authors has erred in writing anything at all. I affirm that today. Martin Luther said, the scriptures, although they were written by men, are not of men nor from men, but from God. And I affirm that today. John Calvin said, the law and the prophets are not a doctrine delivered according to the will and pleasure of men, but dictated by the Holy Spirit. We owe to the scriptures the same reverence which we owe to God. And I affirm that today. Dr. Francis Schaeffer said, the Bible is without mistake because God inspired the word and God cannot contradict himself. And I affirm that today. Dr. J.I. Packer wrote, Dr. Packer, one of my seminary professors, he said, only truth can be authoritative. Only an inerrant Bible can be used in the way that God means scripture to be used. Its text is God-given, its message an organic unity, the infallible word of an infallible God, a web of revealed truths centered upon Christ. And I affirm that today. I haven't moved one inch. And I know a lot of you who may be evangelicals have stumbled upon this broadcast and you're saying, 
ah, but he, he became a Catholic. Does that mean he abandoned the Bible? No, I affirm the Bible 100%. Nothing has really changed since my Navy days, since my Assembly of God days, since my Gordon Conwell days, since my Calvary Chapel days. I affirm the full truthfulness, the full inspiration, and the full inerrancy of the Bible, period. No exceptions. And this is what the Catholic Church says about the Bible, and this is from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It says, the sacred scripture, the church constantly finds her nourishment and strength, for she welcomes it not as a human word, but as what it really is, the word of God. And I affirm that this day. It goes on further and says, Christ, the eternal living word of God, must through the Holy Spirit open our minds to understand the scriptures. We must acknowledge that the books of scripture firmly, faithfully, and without error teach the truth which God, for the sake of our salvation, which to see confided to the sacred scriptures. And I affirm that today. So I'm a man of the Bible. I love the Bible. I believe it. My whole life has been changed as a result of my encounter with Jesus Christ through the scriptures. And so when we study biblical prophecy, uh, we may have differences in interpretations, but if you're a firm believer in the Bible, we're not going to have any difference regarding the inspiration and inerrancy of the Holy Scriptures. Therefore, uh, Catholics, obviously, since I'm a Catholic, are welcome to Luke 21 broadcast, but also Lutherans, Presbyterians, Baptists, Assembly of God, Evangelicals, Atheists, anyone interested in biblical prophecy, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, I have studied biblical prophecy for 50 years, and just because, in case you're wondering, I started when I was about two and a half years old. And during that time, the 50 years that I've studied biblical prophecy, I've gone through practically every school of biblical prophecy there was trying to find the full scriptural view of what exactly God teaches regarding the future and biblical prophecy. And so I will be bringing that to you. And you might be surprised as we go along that I actually understand even if you don't believe uh, the viewpoint that I'll be sharing, uh, you might be surprised to find that I understand what you believe. I've looked at those, I've read those, and in most cases, I've been those things. So Jesus and the apostles thought it was very important for Christians to know about what's ahead. And Jesus had explicit teaching about it. St. Paul made it his point in new churches where the, he had brand new converts and, and only a short time with them included serious teaching about the end, about what biblical prophecy teaches because it was important. I'm Steve Wood, your host, and thanks for joining us for Luke 21. I invite you to be with us in future episodes, and please ask your friends to join us as well.